carbon is present in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Plants take carbon out of the carbon dioxide and use it to build carbohydrates and proteins. We eat plants so that we can use these carbon-based molecules to build up our bodies. We also use them for energy. Carbon is present in the proteins of our muscles, skin and hair. If I could look like anyone, really, it would probably be Elle McPherson. Carbon is also found in products from fossil fuels, our petrol, plastics and even pharmaceuticals. There are more compounds containing carbon than all the other elements put together. There would not be life without it. We cook food to break down the large carbon molecules the food is made of. Then the food is easier for our bodies to process. If we heat it too much, the molecules break down further, all the way to carbon. When wood is heated, it too breaks down to carbon or charcoal. The traditional method of making charcoal is to set wood on fire with very little air. The heat breaks down the organic molecules and drives off the volatile parts as smoke, leaving only carbon and minerals behind. This destructive distillation is called pyrolysis. Many complex carbon compounds can be decomposed by heat. Oil is made of carbon and hydrogen. The hydrogen burns first and the carbon next. If we cool the flame with this glass, the carbon doesn't become hot enough to ignite. It deposits as soot or carbon black. A lot of carbon is locked up underground as coal and oil. When we burn it, we release it into the air as carbon dioxide. However, the great bulk of carbon atoms on Earth is found in rocks such as limestone and dolomite. But limestone neither burns nor turns black when heated. Even when it is heated, in the absence of air, no blackening occurs. The limestone does, however, undergo a material change for a gas is produced. This gas contains chemically combined carbon. We can show that it is combined with oxygen. When magnesium burns in atmospheric oxygen, a white powder is produced, magnesium oxide. The chemical equation for this process is magnesium plus oxygen makes magnesium oxide. Magnesium also burns in the gas from heated limestone. The products of combustion are white magnesium oxide and carbon. So the gas must contain oxygen and carbon. Magnesium is able to take the oxygen out of carbon dioxide, leaving carbon. So when limestone or calcium carbonate is decomposed by heat, the products are calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide gas. Carbon, as we normally see it, has no particular structure, so we call it amorphous, without shape. There are, however, a few distinct forms of carbon called allotropes.
Graphite is an allotrope, or structural form of carbon. The atoms of carbon are arranged in a special way. If lumps of graphite are crushed, the result is not powder, but flakes. An electron microscope picture of a graphite flake shows many layers. This is because even the atoms are arranged in layers. The atoms within a layer are chemically bonded to each other and are as strong as a diamond. However, the bonding between the layers is much weaker. This makes graphite soft to touch. It is also this layer structure that makes it so slippery. It is used in pencils because small amounts of graphite slide off onto the paper. Another allotropic form of carbon is diamond. Diamonds are naturally made underground under high pressure and temperature. Diamond is transparent and has the highest refractive index of any substance, which is why it sparkles when cut and polished. In a diamond, each carbon atom is surrounded by four equidistant neighbours. The distances between the midpoints of adjacent atoms are all the same. Diamond is hard because there are no weak bonds. It resists most chemicals. Diamond is the hardest known substance. Because of this, diamonds are in great demand in industry. Diamond tip drills can cut through anything. The surface of this large drilling head is embedded with diamonds. They are known as industrial grade, as they are too small or imperfect for jewelry. They can be natural or synthetic. Diamonds are excellent conductors of heat this helps strengthen the life of drilling heads. To test between zirconia, a fake diamond, and this real diamond, you can use the tongue test. Diamond feels cold, and zirconia, or glass, feels warm. They don't conduct heat as well. Diamond is synthetically produced by compressing graphite at a pressure of over 50,000 atmospheres, and at a temperature of 1,000 degrees Celsius. The layers are forced together and the chemical bonds form in three dimensions. Much of the graphite has been turned to diamonds. They are quite small and are mainly used as industrial diamonds. They are used on sharpening stones. They can even sharpen tungsten carbide. Diamonds are embedded in or coated on cutting wheels and any tool that has to be extremely hard. Being made of carbon, both diamond and graphite burn to form carbon dioxide. The test for carbon dioxide is to bubble it through a solution of calcium hydroxide or lime water. The specimens are heated. Pure oxygen is fed into the tubes from the right side. First, the finely divided graphite burns. Only when the temperatures increase to over 1000 degrees Celsius does the diamond ignite in the flow of oxygen. Both the graphite and the diamond are completely consumed by the fire. The gas given off turns the lime water milky, so it is carbon dioxide. The chemical equation for this process is calcium hydroxide solution plus carbon dioxide gas makes calcium carbonate precipitate plus water.
So this confirms that the diamond and graphite are both made of carbon. Diamonds are not forever. Another allotrope of carbon is fullerene, named after the architect Buckminster Fuller, who used these shapes for buildings. The buckyball is a ball-shaped molecule. The most common is a molecule with a formula of C60. This molecule has a structure like a soccer ball, with 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. It may one day be used as micro ball bearings. Another fullerene is a bucky tube looking like rolled up chicken wire. They have intriguing properties and may one day be stronger than diamond. They may be used as micro superconductors. Fullerenes are present in meteorites and can contain atoms of gas trapped inside. They were found in clay sediments deposited during an asteroid impact some 65 million years ago. Fullerenes can also be detected in some anthracite deposits and in rocks seared by lightning strikes. Carbon allotropes are simply different forms of carbon. It is the way these atoms are linked together that accounts for their properties. Thank mm -hmm. you.